Hi everyone, my name is Mikesh Patel. I'm the founder of Automated. For the past six months, my team and I have been working really hard to bring automation to desktop 3D printers. Let me show you what we have got. Here we have got auto eject system that consists of auto eject Mark 1, which is the ejection arm over here. Um, the auto rack, which would store your prints and empty build plates. And the third main component would be the auto engine software that seamlessly brings your printer and ejection systems together. Let me quickly show you how the auto engine would seamlessly send the print jobs to your printers. Here in the dashboard, I can add the new print jobs. I can simply select the file, select the choice of printer, and add that to the print queue. Let me add one more file so you can have an idea of how that works. Second file selected, I would have to select the printer and just in case if you've got multiple printers, and now the print queue is ready. I'd have to select both the print jobs inside the print job. For that to happen, I would have to select a storage location, let's say storage location three and four, select the printer of your choice and select the ejection system. Once that's done, simply start the print job and now the print job would be sent to your printers. So now that you can see that print job has been sent to Bamboo Labs C1 preprinter and the printer has kicked in accepting that print job. While it's do that, let me show you how our ejection system would bring the ejection into action. So here you can see the auto eject mark one has been homed and now it's going to grab the opening mechanism that we've designed for the Bamboo Lab printers. As you can see, it's slowly going to grab the handle of the Bamboo Lab P1S and slowly open the door. While it's doing that, let me also run you through the basic components of this ejection system. Um, so as you can see, it consists of simple three motors for driving XYZ um, and we have attach and stop on the Z drive um, to home it. Um, also, we have used off the shelf um, 2040 and 2020 profiles um, so that it's easy to build and easy to replace the parts with. Here on the bench, you can see the components in more details. Um, as you can see, we have got the 8mm rods, 12mm rods, um, 8mm lead screw, and some bearings that you can easily find in any hardware store. Um, as a part of the kit set, you'd be, they would come with all the mechanical as well as electronic components and then you'd have to print the files yourself at home in order to build this gantry together. So to see it further, the door has been successfully opened and the ejection system is going to basically grab the build plate and eject the build plate from the printer. In this demonstration, you can see that we have used uh, the blue Panda CryoGrip build plates. Um, and one of the reasons why we have done that is because those are the, one of the only build plates that's come with extended lip uh, where we can attach the brackets in the front of it um, for it to be able to uh, grab by the mechanism that we have designed. So as you can see, the build plates has been grabbed successfully by our ejection arm. And now it's going to move it to auto rack and store it into a slot that is available to it. Coming down to explaining further of our auto rack, um, as you can see, this particular auto rack has been slotted with um, six slots at about 40 mil height. As you can see, that height is con can be configured by you to change the height to let's say 20 mil increments or 60 mil increments if you really wanted to. You can remove the slots um, as per your need. Um, for this demonstration, as you can see on the slot four, we have got already uh, printed build plates stored. Um, and that has got a build plates uh, part that is higher than the next slot. Um, so as a part of this process, what this job is going to do is miss the fifth slot and store that into the sixth slot that is available, clearing the, making sure that there's enough clear space in between and there's no chance of collision between the parts. Also, um, as a part of um, this uh, ejection system, what you can do is you can modify the height of the Z axis itself. You can make it shorter if you really wanted to run just short prints, or you can make it taller um, to suit your needs. Same with the auto rack, you can configure that to have 
different heights and also you can configure that with multiple different rack system. Um, at this stage, as I've explained, um, this system based works with the build plate from Panda um, since, uh, since there's got a bigger lip on in front of it. Um, along with that, um, over the last few months, we've been trialing and testing this system with different print uh, printer brands as well as different uh, printer models. Uh, we believe that with this ejection system, we can comfortably uh, manage uh, build plates that are less than about 250 by 250. Um, and as you can see in the background, we've got the AnyQB Cobra S1 uh, that is working with one of our other ejection system. Um, the print job has just finished and is going to eject the build plate and store it into a rack. Um, I've already shown you how it's working with the Bamboo Lab P1P. Uh, on this side, you can see that uh, we have got a FlashWatch 85X, which has been trial and tested with the ejection system. We've also got the Elugu Centauri Carbon working with our system, along with Creality K1C. We have also been testing this system with Prusa's Mark IV and Core 1, um, and you'll be able to see those videos released on our YouTube channel very soon. Also, as an experiment, uh, a lot of the people have been asking us about, can this be extended to cover multiple printers or multiple racks? Um, as you can see on this side, uh, we have made a gantry which is 1.5 meter long and that covers two printers and two racks so that you don't have to have a one um, ejection system per printer, where you can combine them with a couple of different printers and a couple of different racks um, as per your need. So as you can see, um, our ejection system and automation system is highly modular as well as um, it can be built by anybody. Uh, you don't need a particular expertise to build this system. Um, it's going to be very affordable um, on the Kickstarter itself. Um, so as a part of this um, journey over the last six months, we have decided to release uh, the first model um, Origic Mark I on the Kickstarter itself. Um, and we would deliver that project in about four months time. Uh, the reason why we're asking for those four months time is because we would like to get more beta testers on board. We would try and test a uh, few more configurations of this setup and few more printer brands to work with so that uh, software can um, adapt to any printer, brand, uh, brand, printer brands that's available out there. Also, hardware um, R&D is uh, only a small part of it. Um, software has been quite a lot more challenging in order to make sure that it seamlessly talks to all these printer brands, as well as allow you to have a control um, over your own server or over the web so that you can queue up, uh, queue up multiple jobs um, over the phone or over the web app itself. Um, so, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the key features of our system is that it's modular. Um, it uh, comes in a DIY kit set form. Um, you can configure it however you want. Uh, you can pair it with multiple different print, uh, printer brands as well as different printer models. So you're not locked into just one system or one brand of printers itself. Um, and also, uh, this is going to be one of the most affordable solution out there that exists uh, that allows you to automate your 3D printers and allow you to run your 3D print farms 24 seven. Um, so we would really love for you, for you to support this Kickstarter um, and allow us to grow as a venture so that we can build more exciting automation solution for our desktop 3D printing community. Thank you.